Jason Lockenfour of CBS Sports, who joins me here. It seems like the commissioner uh, took it as um, uh, DeMoris saying something to the Wall Street Journal. Perhaps uh, he didn't have uh, a standing to make. That's what that sounded like to me. Yeah, I think this one is like horseshoes and hand grenades, right? It, there's no real close. I mean, you either <laughs> come to some sort of global agreement where right. everyone comes out and does a big kumbaya and says, Here, here's, here's our process for handling off-field discipline moving forward, or, or really, you know, we're, we're just kind of licking our thumbs and sticking them in the air and see which way the wind's blowing. But the, the, the PA has, has had several proposals that it's put forth at various times, many of them involving – um, a mutually agreed upon panel of whatever they are, former senators, former Congress people, former judges, what have you, who both sides would agree to, sort of like the on-field discipline is done. You know, when they agree to Ted Cottrell or Matt Burke or whoever we've seen, you know, do that over the years. Um, and the league has steadfastly been opposed to that. Is there some other middle ground, Rich? I mean, maybe, but um, I think this is one where the league certainly wants you to believe they're open to change, but Finding that common ground, um, good luck. I, I would just say Godspeed with that one. Let's get to some rule proposals uh, that were passed, Jason, starting with the automatic ejection for two unsportsmanlike uh, flags that you receive in the same game. Do we know uh, what exact penalties would fall into this bucket? Jason? I did not get the complete list as I scrambled to get to the airport. I mean, I know that there's obviously if you've contact with an official, uh, there's a verbal element to this. If you're found, you know, to be using profane language or taunting someone repeatedly, then there's that element to it. Um, it it's not necessarily going to be something that hits to the head. Um, from a personal foul standpoint, means that you're being tossed. Uh, so I, I don't know that it necessarily gets at exactly what some in the league hierarchy at Park Avenue would want it to get to, but it does send a message that sportsmanship counts and all that stuff matters. And certainly the instance we saw with the, the Bengals and the Steelers and obviously the Theodore Beckham, Josh Norman saying no, nobody wants that. And, and, and now would this rule in and of itself curb that? I'm not sure. But at least, again, it sends a message, and it probably further empowers the officials more than anything else to just know that, hey, you know, there are grounds for, for ejection is already written in the rule book. Are we getting to a spot where we're not, not going to have kickoffs anymore in the NFL? What are you hearing down there? I guess we're instant towards that, right? I, this one will be interesting, though, because some of these kickers are pretty darn good, and, and I, I know you're a big fan of them, by the way. They're people, too, Jason. They're fan club. Yeah, you yeah. love them. Got to love the kickers. Mm -hmm. uh, but – you know, do they find enough hang time to offset this? How creative can they get? There's some smart, smart special teams coaches out there. Heck, you know, the Baltimore Ravens head coach is a special teams coach at heart. So I'll be interested to see how this plays out in theory and, and, and in practice. And if you notice, this is one with a one-year, uh, you know, sort of like let's wait and see approach. This was not uh, put forth as a new edict. It's basically a one-year proposal, and then they'll sit down next spring and, and see how it worked out and what they think of it. Jason Lockenfour of CBS Sports joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show as he is uh, putting his trade table in the upright position. I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I've got position A1 if you're scoring at home on Southwest. But I, I, I was going to say that I thought I did hear the Southwest dings. I yes, thought I, you hear it? I, I, can hold, I can hold it a little closer. My know. gosh, no, but it seems like somebody's going haywire on that thing. Like, yeah, we get it. You're boarding soon. I'm, I'm seriously A1. But you're you're, you're big, first up? Big three boarding gift uh, group here, Rick. Now, let me ask you this, Jason. Jason, let me ask you this. Let's say you were A3, and the person who's A4 is standing in front of you. I don't think they can have it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Do you say I, something? If I'm in the vicinity, I'm good. I, would you have you ever done that? I've never done that. They're like, oh, I, I don't know. It's you. it's a principled stance, Jason. You know what I mean? Like, because if you I'm, let the A4 in front of you, I mean, why, why not A5? Why, it's sort of like the Adam LaRoche thing. If you're going to have Drake there all the time, why wouldn't Chris Sale let his kid be there all the time? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, it's a slippery slope. I agree. But as long as, you know, how you've got like the five, the segments of five, as long as I'm in the right segment of five, okay, I, I'm good. I'm fine. So you're saying if you're A5 and A6 is in front of you, if then... I'm, yeah, if I'm A5 and I'm in the middle of like the five to ten range, then yeah. I might consider it. But even then, I, I really doubt I would. Because I've worked with you, Jason. You're that middle Atlantic pugnacious sort. You don't... I am and I'm not, though. I also have really good manners. I, I'm kind of weird that way. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're a conundrum. As long as I don't feel like you're... You are like, coming at me. We're good. The conundrum that is Jason Lock and Ford joining yeah, me here go. on the show. So, uh, okay, Kaepernick is the first, is the next domino in the quarterback uh, free agency slash maybe yeah. on the trading block saga that 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 fills all the other positions potentially. 
Would you agree with that assessment, Jason? Well, I, I think RG3 could go ahead and sign with Cleveland before then. But, but I think generally that's – but I don't really know that that's a ripple or a domino because I don't know that anybody else wants him. You know what I mean? The Jets just wanted to be linked to him because they need something to be linked to besides Fitzpatrick. Um, Denver doesn't have any real interest. And Chip Kelly kind of hinted today that, well, yeah, he might make some sense for us, but surely we're not going to go down that road until we figure out exactly what's up with Kaepernick. So to bring that all even fuller circle, yeah, I think that is true. I just don't know, other than Denver, what the real options are there. And I don't think this is going to be a value play for the 49ers. They're going to have to view it as an addition by subtraction play, as a we're moving forward in a different direction. And we don't need this already somewhat embattled new coach to be coming in with a quarterback who really does not want to be there. Not because of Chip Kelly, but because of Trent Balky, because of Jed York, because of the team's trainers and how they handle his injury and everything else. So I think at the end of the day, they just, you know, maybe just bite the bullet and take a four or whatever they can get from Denver and and call it a day. In which case, if RG3 is still out there, I think he's their next man up. Certainly they could draft a quarterback as well. So you think – uh, what's more likely then, okay, Kaepernick stays in San Francisco, Sanchez is the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos, Case Keenum is a starting quarterback for the L.A. Rams. What do you have for me here? Well, I, I think, I mean, unless Keenum gets beat out by a rookie, they don't seem like they want to invest in anybody else at quarterback. So I'm going to start to take them at their word on that one, at least as far as they can control things right now. I don't buy Denver with Sanchez for a minute. Um, there's a market out there for Mike Lennon. There's a market out there for, for Brian Hoyer. If when RG3 signs with Cleveland, there's a market for Josh McCown. And Fitzpatrick's still out there, although I just think eventually he takes $10 million a year. He gets as close to $10 million a year as he can get from the Jets and call it that a day. So, you know, I don't think always, you know, nobody's going to put baby in a corner. I mean, he's called a cucumber all the time. And it's one thing to be that way with us in the media and publicly, but I talked to a lot of agents and, and, you know, other teams that have dealt with him and he's not sweating this quarterback thing. If he gets his price on Kaepernick, that's door number one. If not, there's, as I just mentioned, three or four other doors where he could explore. He's not going to spend big money on that position. He just proved he doesn't necessarily need that position to be all that successful. I don't know what's more surprising, that you think that Case Keenum could be the starting quarterback for the Rams when they return to Los Angeles, or that you just used a pop culture reference to describe John Elway as Jennifer Gray. I don't know which one yeah. takes me back a, more, Jason. They're both, they're both stallions in their own way, right? But see, so you really think, I mean, that that because Elway, knowing, knowing he's seen history. OK, see, he saw what happened after he left. All right. And and so he, he can go with a Danny Cannell type guy in Denver in their in their Super Bowl title defense year with this I mean, window of a the defense production of Osweiler and Manning. Now, I will say they lost some pieces on defense. They might not be quite as stout. Uh, you know, obviously, Malik Jackson's gone. Uh, Trevathan's gone. But if they were bottom 20% in the league and pretty much any quarterback metric you could look at combining the, you know, the gross production of Osweiler and Manning, including the postseason. So, I mean, you could, you know, now does a Josh McCown stay healthy and, and all that stuff? I, I don't know. I mean, you, there's, there's issues there. But I, I look, I mean, Glennon's a young guy. I, 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 I'm just telling you, they're not, they're not panicked. And, and, I think they're okay. And in the Rams thing, I don't understand it, but they've made it so clear. Now, again, do they, do they, somebody follow them in the draft? Does the right thing happen? That could change everything. But they're not pursuing what would be deemed to be a potentially better veteran option than Case Keenum right now. So, again, if a kid comes to them in the draft and that kid beats out Keenum, then so be it. But they don't seem to have any interest in bringing in more proven competition in the interim. Last one for you, Jason. Uh, Jason Lockett for CBS Sports joining me here. Carson Wentz, pro day is tomorrow. What's the, when you heard, what, what you were hearing down at the owners meeting, the, the, the uh, more likely landing spots for Wentz and Goff next month? What do you think? You know, it's going to be interesting in, in Cleveland. I mean, I, I think one of them is, is going to be in, in Cleveland. I, I couldn't tell you exactly which one yet, and I don't think they'll know themselves until they get them in their building on an individual basis and really spend that quality time with them, go to dinner with the owner, right. put them on the board, you know, put them through their paces, see how they mesh with their personnel. I, I'd say it's, it, it's a bit of a coin flip right now. I, I have a feeling it ends up being the kid from Cal, but that's more of a hunch than anything else. 
All right, Jason, thank you very much. You are now free to move about the country, okay? No, I'm actually, I'm buckled in, Rich. I'm, I'm sitting here on this uh, uh, wow. window seat. So you, 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 got on, you got on the plane without, uh, uh, that was very smooth. I had a bag I had to put up top, and I managed to do that without you even noticing. Okay, so now one last Southwest etiquette yes, question sir. for you. <laughs> do you take some of your personal belongings and place it to the middle seat next to you to make sure that that stays free while everyone I, else no, boards I've behind you? I've never done that. I, and I rarely move my, I pretty much never move my chair back. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little guy, too, you know, so I don't think of that Jason, but I mean, I just, seriously, man, do you, do you make sure you don't make eye contact with anybody who might think of taking that middle seat? You got to protect that middle seat, Jason. Come on I, now. I really don't. I really don't. The good thing about my life now is I rarely fly, so I'm like, like an enlightened flyer because I don't have to do it all the time. Most of the time I'm on trains. An you know what I mean? Flyer. Which is great. So oh, I'm, you're this. I'm, you do the Acela to work. Is that what you do? I, it's a beautiful commute, Rich, I got to tell you. All right. Jason, thanks again. We'll chat soon. Hey, anytime, right? brother. Anytime. Same to you. That Jason Lock and Four on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>